All right, everybody, welcome back to my puns set reviews. Now we're reviewing the Justice cards in the set. Starting with, uh, <laughs> start off strong with Bring to Justice. Bring to Justice is a zero power, triple justice spell. Just the following, silence and stun enemy unit. If you have Aegis, silence and kill it instead. Whew. Wow. This is a card. Wow, this is kind of insane. Um, I don't know why they made it cost zero. Honestly, it should cost one. Now, to be fair, it is triple green. Triple justice here. And to get that effect to happen. But wow, is this powerful. This is a four-star all-star. It is going to see play in um, both formats. Because it is ridiculously easy to get face ages. Ridiculously easy. Um... Especially in Horu, um, you can see play in the throw some fire in there as well. One hundred percent sees play. This is kind of amazing. Even if you don't have face ages, the zero power silence the stunning unit. It's still incredibly powerful. Um, yeah, this is a slam dunk all star, and yeah, kind of a mistake. And we'll see. Uh, Boulder Gate Guard. It's a one power, just a zero three bird with flying, of course, um, with ability plus two attack while there's a stun unit. One star. I don't get it, but stunning is thing apparently is good in draft. Bubble shield. Bubble shield is a one power, double justice, fast spell. Give one of your units ages. Primal, primal. You gain an ages. What have we looked at so far? The benefit from getting a face ages. Oh, that's right. Brain justice. Also, uh, we talked about it currently when this announced. This is a one power fast spell ages to negate removal. And negating removal is great. Now, this is definitely going to see playing quite a few decks. Um, just giving a unit ages is really good. Um, I mean, the Horror Rider, the 5-4, the when it gets plus 5 attack when it's Aegis, I definitely think could benefit from this as well. Because um, one of the problems is it just stands there as a 0-4 flyer when it does have an Aegis, which is very easy to break. Um, but yeah, so this is 4-star, uh, f- uh, star, all-star, pretty awesome. Uh, Crown Patroller is a 1-power, 2-1 soldier with summon plunder. Draft card. Plunder's pretty good in draft, from my understanding. From Anguish. Now we found the green one of this cycle is a one power spell, not a fast spell like the other ones are. Kill a unit with five attack or more, it gets void bound. Woo! Okay. And transmute um, Winchest color. Well, Winchest, double, I mean, triple fire, triple shadow, five for bur- burning cruelty. Uh, Burning Cruelty is a 6 power, 5-4. At the start of your turn, play the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, it gets charged. And deadly. Oh, oh God! <laughs> Jesus H. Christ! You can pay 5 to give a unit plus 5 attack this turn. Wow! Holy moly, that is a... That is a card. These from spells are... Whew. Pretty spicy. Um, hell, this may be a Stonescar top deck, top end. Like, that is a powerful ability. Um, yeah. Whew. It gets charged and deadly. That is just absurd get getting getting triple fire triple shadow is very good i mean from ang- like the, the first ability is pretty decent as well i mean you can probably play it in some kind of um winchest stack but man this is this is some, some strong strong um transmutes they, they really push this transmute cycle um yeah this card um if you're interested to see what kind of deck this goes in, it might just go into a like like a, a top end Winchest deck. Like, 
um, decks that are already playing, like, um, maybe this is, goes, goes in, like, a Winchest Control, like, uh, that are playing Ikaria, Razan, um, oh boy, Razan with Deadly, oh my gosh, G giving Razan charge and Deadly just seems nutty, um, yeah, I, th I think this goes in something like that. Splash, certainly something splashing shadow in there as well for like the early game, mixing it up early game. Um, I could definitely see this card going in there. Solid card, solid, solid, solid card. Um, just settings. This might be the best one because getting um, for justice super easy to do. All right. Noble Protector is a one power justice, one two soldier, and two gain two armor. It's draft card. One star. Trick Shot Ruffian. Trick Shot Ruffian is a one power, one two summon you may gain. Give another unit life steal and plus attack plus health this turn equal to your justice influence. Now, this card is not bad. Like, honestly, like, we're having really good. And, um, this is like a baby, this is like a man Mantle of Justice on legs. Um, it's not permanent like Mantle of Justice is. Mantle of Justice is 100% better. Um, but it is ridiculously easy to get Justice Influence, um, in this format. I think this card almost, I'm giving it two stars because I think this card is promise because, like, we're also comparing this card to, um, the Drill Sergeant. Um, and the, the three mana three, three, that gives another unit plus three, plus three when it comes to play. If you have three influence, this is a one mana, that ability, this card is automatically better than that card in that situation. Cause this is not a one mana played on one on turn one. I know also as well, you get a three, three body out of that. The three, three body is something to scoff at as well. Um, much better than a one, two body, of course. But I think because of that card saw play, I think this card is C play as well. That's why it's, I put it as a two star. I think it has a hundred percent has potential. I think it has like, because like I said, it's so easy to get just as influence in this, in this format. And we'll see. I, it's definitely one to watch um, and think about when you're deck building. We have Audacious Ruse. Audacious Ruse is a two power justice. Enemy units get minus one attack this turn equal to your justice influence. Draft card. I mean, you, you make some crazy blowouts, but yeah. Badge of Honor is a two power justice one three weapon. Will the wielder attacks gain justice? This card is so good. This is ridiculous how good this card is. Like, we, we've seen a little bit of the Surge so far. And we're going to get there. Because Justice has the Surge as well as Fire does. This card is gross. Like, it triggers all Surge abilities when you attack. It might as well just say, Trigger Surge. Gains you a Justice, which is relevant to other things. This card is really good. <laughs> it's really good. Plus, three health is nothing to scoff at as well. Like, especially when you work at next card, uh, Chain Whip Bludgeoner. Chain Whip Bludgeoner is a two power Justice 2 2 Minotaur with Aegis. Love it. And Surge, plus one, plus one this turn. This card is stupidly good. Four stars. Especially when you put the Badge of Honor on the Chain with Bludgeoner, it just gets crazy. Like, no way around it. It just gets crazy. And it doesn't matter who gets the Badge of Honor. As long as they're attacking, with Chain with Bludgeoner's attacking, you're getting that buff mid-combat. And it's great. It is so great. I love it. And then finally, uh, next we have... Uh, Greenstone Officer is a two power triple justice 2 2 paladin uh, with lifesteal imbue. And you can pay two to an exhaust Greenstone Officer to imbue her with one of your units if she's not already imbued. Okay. So if I'm reading this correct correctly, 
you can uh, stunner to give something else plus two plus two permanently while you have room play. It's fine. It's okay. One star. I guess when she outlives her usefulness. This is the time I wish Imbue gave you their battle skills. I, 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 wish, I wish it worked like Exalted, like temporary Exalted. Like it gave the battle skills. Because like you think about it, Exalted was like you give, when something dies, you give something else a weapon equal to the attack and health and the battle skills they had. This Imbue, not as good as Exalted. Which is sad. But a decent enough card. Like, it's one star. Solemn Clergy is a two power 1-1 one, one cleric with summon plunder. Two, you may silence a unit. One star. That's plunder, which is nice. But uh, it's actually you have to entomb to do this. Um, I guess it does, it does block. But, uh, yeah, not exciting, but then we have Caravan Guard. Caravan Guard can't attack unless you have uh, five Justice Influence. That's a 3-5 Soldier. Pretty good imbue target. Like, solid. It's a 3-5. It's not attacking much early. It's It seems like pretty decent. And, um, but if you do be able to attack with it... Um, you getting a three five body, but it and it can defend as well. This this is deceptively good card. Like um, I wish it had something like, I guess if it had endurance, we'd be able to view onto it. But I kind of wish it had endurance, like something else. Like, but I guess they didn't feel it need to attack on anything else with this card. Just make it a just a, a big body that once you get to five, uh. Influence, which we've discussed, is very easy to do. All right, we have Enter the Monastery. Enter the Monastery is a three-power double justice. Spell, draw two justice sigils from your deck. Double time, play one of them. Ooh, okay. It's not bad. A little bit of ramp. A little bit of ramp. Um, it's a very Combry card. I wonder, okay, I wonder if you get to pick which one you get to play. Oh, wait, they're both dodge decisions. <laughs> why, do it, why would it matter? For some reason, I'm like, yeah, which, which one of these looks prettier? <laughs> could play one of them. And that's, that's, it's ramp. Um, it's also card drawing green as well, so. Wish it was fast speed, but you can't ask for too much more for this. Um, it's good, even if you don't have the second part of the puzzle, just drawing those two Justice Influence, um, we've already seen, be very good. Um, it was so good, they had a nerf that um, the car when it was discarded, you, you, you got to do that. Um, and I think if you're if you're in a Combry Ramp deck, which <laughs> Combry Ramp is totally a thing, um, this seems like pretty good for that. Yeah, I think this is playable. Probably three stars. Um, we'll see where it fits in the format. But this is a solid ramp spell. Equalize. Oh boy. The green one of this particular cycle is a three power quadruple justice spell. With the player with the most units must sacrifice units until they are equal. The player with the most cards in hand must discard cards until they are equal. Oh boy, this is a this is this is balance. I see you, LSV. I see what you're doing here. This is balance. This is this is a a hundred percent Magic the Gathering card. Um. Now. The problem with this card is you want it early, of course. Like, you want it, like, the unitless decks are going to be playing this card. No no doubt about it. Um, unit, unitless decks are going to be, like, 
because this is this is a one sided board wipe for the unitless decks. Like, but it also encourages you to play cards. You gotta play cards, and uh, I don't know. It it it's good. It's a four star card. It's incredibly powerful. It's gonna see play. I just don't know where. I don't like. Okay, the horror decks are actually gonna have to adjust their build to fit this card in, and I think they want to do. I think it is a powerful enough card to do that because it's good in a variety of situations. Like if you're if you're the control mirror, who who gets this down like who's playing their cards out, who's who's go, who's playing for tempo, who's playing for okay, I'm going to make sure that every turn I'm playing cards and I'm playing power, I'm I'm not missing any of my drops here. And if you're if you're cutting your hand out while they're just like drawing cards and passing, you're going to get more value out of this. I, it is an incredibly fascinating card with incredibly powerful ability. It's 100% going to see play. I, they're going to have to look at the better deck builders than me figuring out what it does. Like, where's good for this? Because I'm, uh, I'm a little lost for words here on what we're doing with this. But, like, it's going in control decks. And we're just... We might just have to bite the bullet and discard some cards, honestly. Like, it's... But three mana board wipes are good <laughs> are very good um and giving unitless fuel is always good in my book because i love unitless control all right so frontline volunteer is a three power double justice three four warrior and if you have double fire quick draw and double primal overwhelm not bad this is a solidly designed card. I'm so happy they made it a 3-4. They could have made it a 3-3. They very easily could have made it a 3-3. I would have been sad. But they didn't. They made it a 3-4. And now I'm happy. Because this is... Uh, I wish it had a relevant type. Warrior is not a relevant type. Which makes me sad. But... this I'm giving this a 2. Because... um. Solid enough body and relevant enough colors. Um, like you go this into Vargo Red Claw. There you go. You figured it out. But I don't know. I part of me wishes to it had had. Um, what's it called? Uh, Warcry. But I want more Warcry in general. That's just me. All right, so. Inspiring Leadership. Inspiring Leadership is a three-power Justice Relic. When you play a unit, your me set, another one of your units has the same attack and health. Mmm. Weird. Maybe this is for Big Fatty Clockroach that we saw earlier. Like, <laughs> it's a 10-10. Um. It's weird, because... I don't know what to think about this. Like, it has like combo potential. Well, not combo. Like, like, like weird. Like, it has build around potential. I should say. Like, but but the problem is it's a relic, and you have to get it in play. And like, because you basically would would make your deck around fatties, like value fatties, essentially. Um, being able to throw down with this card, and I can get behind that, but at the same time, it's just one of those that's like I don't get it. I'm gonna give it a two stars because it's it's an interesting ability, and I think it's somewhat playable. I just don't like it. it it's a powerful enough ability that like you get to play things like um. Like secret, uh, secret weapon that the the shift the two mana shift eight eight, and when you play that, you make everything else. You make other people eight eights. I'm I'm getting I'm getting weird with this card though. I'm trying to find. I, we, we I was talking about secret weapon the other day and or hidden weapon whatever it's called the the two mana well the eight mana. 
um, eight 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 that you can shift for two that uh, when they play a unit becomes a uh, uh, it takes an extra turn to come unshifted and uh, finding uses for it and an inspiring leadership deck turning something into an eight eight I mean seems decent for for two mana um I don't know we'll see we'll see it's a two star Oscar which fun well, fact about Oscar when I did my pack opening I magically got four of this guy which felt like a sign not gonna lie felt like a sign here um it's only rare that I got four of with my my 35 packs I guess Oscar chief tinker is a three power two five when Oscar attacks gain four shadow and when you've got six shadow when you sacrifice a non-valkyrie unit it becomes a valkyrie with flying at the end of your turn play it from your void or an animation now this is an interesting card because it wants you to sacrifice things and it's a decent enough body a, a three power two five bodies is pretty decent and it's gonna stick there and until you gain up that 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 shadow and it gets you that shadow and that is key this could fit into the um the shadow archetype the um mono shadow because it it's ramping you up there so you can play those akarias easier and so on and so forth um problem is she's a valkyrie so <laughs> um But yeah, so there's various sack outlets. Like we have like Devour, we've got Combust. Um, like I mean, there's, there's more like, oh my gosh, this with Flame Bath Ret Retribution. Holy moly, what a combo! Where you sacrifice something, give it Exalted, and it comes back at the end of the turn as a Valkyrie with flying. I'm seeing it already. I'm, 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 the wheels are turning in my head. I'm gonna build it. I have four Oscar. I have four flame bathes. Uh, four flame bathes, and <laughs> I think it's gonna be interesting. Um, certainly, certainly interesting. Um, but yeah. So we're gonna find some way of doing it. Cause other fun things you can do with that too, with um, with flame blade Ret retribution is um on shade on, on on shades from corrupt you can turn you can give those exalted and sacrifice them there, there's a lot of things you can sacrifice with uh with oscar here and it's not a once per turn ability so every time you sacrifice something whether it be um for for whatever reason they come back and you play it from your void so this is a pretty interesting card. I, I'm excited to try it out. See if I can uh, make flame bathe ref, rit, uh, flame bathe work. I'm probably calling it the wrong name. Uh, oh yeah, three stars because it's pretty good ability and also just gaining shadow influence is really good. Like, <laughs> just g gaining influence in general is very good because it triggers surge and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I like this quite a bit and I think it should see play. Oh, very least I'm gonna make a deck. I'm, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a deck with him, sacking our units, bringing him back, making him Valkyries, doing shenanigans. But yeah, then we have Silvercrest Purifier. Silvercrest Purifier is a three power, double justice. One one Paladin. It's a Paladin relevant creature type. With uh. Life Steal Surge, double Silvercrest Purifier's attack and health this turn. He's fine. I don't know if he fits in our Surge deck, but I'm going to try him out there. Um, because the problem is a one one, and I know I know we like he needs two surges to be relevant, like to become a three three. I mean, I mean, not a three three, a four four. Exp exponents, exponents. <laughs> 
I don't know what I'm saying at this point. He needs two surges in order to become truly good. Like a three mana two two with life steal, it's not gonna light up the storm. But if you can start piling on the surge, if you can start just surging and surging, he will surge forward. Like, but yeah. Or if you do any kind of other buffs to him, like a, like a finest hour or other stuff. Or if you can find cool ways to, like, mid-combat surge, triggering, stuff like that. Um, it's cool. But. And I guess it's true, too. We do have a lot of double um, influence requirements. Just, like, the, uh, the, the brand new cycle. We'll get to those in a second. So, I guess this thing is generally, a f a f if you can play those dual powers... This generally will end up being a 3-mana 4-4. Four, four. It just has to survive. Like, it has that one health. It's only going to be a 3-mana 4-4 four, four on your turn. Um, unless you're generating crazy amounts of surge on their turn, which I don't know why you're doing that if you are, but... Because... But... It's a really interesting deck card. I'm going to give it a 3. Um, certainly going to try it out. But I'm not 100% sold on it yet. Then we have the Siphoner Paladin. Siphoner Paladin is a three power double justice one five paladin. With uh following effect, you may sacrifice another unit to play a three three relic weapon or give your current relic weapon plus three plus three. Fun. Um one star, but three mana one five, not the worst stats with the Especially if you can uh, I don't know about giving your current relic weapon plus three plus three because I know there there was some decks running around currently that um that revolve around the unblockable weapon whose name escapes me but they're all about boosting that that weapon that weapon's damage and but overall I think this is pretty it's one star draft. Orc Official is a 4 power 1-1 one, one Minotaur with Surge well first has Imbue great and Surge plus 1 plus 1 alright it's permanent plus 1 plus 1 which this intrigues me it is 4 power I'll give it that um, a lot of the other good Surge targets are, are they gain their buff till the end of the turn this if I'm reading the card correctly, is permanent. And that permanence on that plus one, plus one buff, it just has to get there. It just has to get there. But, um, I know that Minotaurs are creeping up because, um, you saw them buff Harga, make her cost two, and various other things. And with enough influence triggers, this guy could actually be pretty decent. Um, I'm putting him at two. He has a lot of potential. Problem is he costs four and he's a one one and it takes some building up to get to that point. But he does have imbue. And however good imbue ends up stacking among the abilities. Um it's certainly something to think about, but I'm looking at everything here and I can't in good faith uh rank this highly. But I give it a two because it certainly has potential and constructed. I just don't know. All right. Um, Camouflage Musket. Camouflage Musket is a four power justice one five relic weapon. I haven't seen too many of those in this set. When one of your units readies, Camouflage Musket gets plus one attack. Wait a minute. That's kind of crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Because <laughs> I mean, it's 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 terrible the turn it comes out, and that and that's that's its biggest problem. But if you've got a lot of units in play, I guess this actually would 
combat will, will combo well with endurance units because they ready on your opponent's turn just buffing it up like that it's a neat card it's a one star card but it's a neat ability um it's it's neat card design space that we've i don't think we've really even seen anything take advantage of when units are readying before so that kudos to the to direwolf for taking advantage of that card design space so well done all right we have Emerald Crafter. Emerald Crafter is a four power double justice three three mage with surge. Increase Emerald Crafter's entomb by plus one plus one. And entomb play a one one Emerald Incarnation. Not bad, honestly. This is a. Uh, I can imagine this getting out of hand pretty quickly. Um, that entomb ability. Did you have to think about like um. If you at least get three surges off while she's in play, which doesn't seem too difficult to do, unless she immediately dies that turn to a, to a seer or various other things that kill a three power, what we're looking at here is it replacing itself, which is a pretty decent effect. Um, still probably one star, but I think this is pretty cool for draft. Unless you're really, like, if you stick the, um, the badge on her, then that's great. <laughs> You'll be generating crazy amounts of, of, of that plus one, plus one. Also, you have to worry about her getting silenced, of course. But, um, it's neat. It's neat. Maybe I'll put it at two. I'm going to put most of these surge cards at two. Like, they have potential, and judging of how much influence we can actually generate i think this is good at two maybe she's good in view target who knows um because when when she dies i mean you, you get something out of her and she just sits there and 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 generates i don't know something to think about Talut, Talut is back we haven't seen Talut in forever Talut the iron gate is a four power quadruple no five justice five five with surge each enemy unit gets minus one attack and your relic weapon gets plus one plus one hey 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 to loot you're doing what you always did except um yeah that is a solid card like really solid yeah because he doesn't even have to attack to, well like now we all know old Taloop was great because he would he would minus the the enemy's team he would ramp you he also costed a lot but new Taloot um he's leaner he's meaner and he works with relic weapons now for some reason um you don't have to attack with one unit anymore <laughs> um yeah and it, I don't know we'll, we'll have to see with him because. His surge ability is really good. Um, especially with these two power... Um, with with most of these influence... Most of these, these power creating two influence. Like, it's kind of crazy. And with Badge of Honor doing additional minus one attack. I, I, I think he goes in the deck. I, I'm, I'll put him at a three. I'm not entirely sold on him, but also four minute five five great stats. Um, but he's going somewhere. Like he's he's a very good ability. Like shrinking the opponent's team is very good. All right, Gates of Hope. I have not. Oh my god, it's a sight. I didn't think there were any sights in this set. Oh my gosh, All right? Gates Gates of Hope is a five power double justice sight. One of your units attacks, you gain one armor. Let's check out Kaseva's agenda. All right, we have harmless questions. Stun enemy unit. Inspire, top unit weapon. Your deck gets plus one, plus one, draw a card. Strength of many, give one of your units plus one, plus one this turn for each of your units. And it makes Kaseva true heart um, equal to your armor. You gain health, gain that much armor. 
Hmm. That is a lot of health on a site. That's a lot of health on a site. I don't know how to evaluate this, though. Like, Harma's question is, is, the, is the protection. Um, because I mean, you're gaining armor when your units attacks, you use attack. Um, save herself is particularly great. Um, uh, I mean, Inspire's cool, draws you a card. So the site replaces itself if you need to. Um, this seems like it kind of wants to be around some kind of, like, aggressive deck? Because it, it seems to want you to go wide here. It seems like you want, it wants you to go some kind of justice, go wide, aggressive, probably something like, like Combri Aggro, I think, wants this. Because, or maybe Argentport Aggro, I don't know. Because a lot of stuff going on here. Like, may maybe Combri Aggro, because, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is the top end of that, because it costs five, and, like, m maybe it's a whole new deck. Maybe it's it's a Combri Relic Weapons deck. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it goes Mercano weapons. Maybe this is goes Mercano armory. Like, it's something with weapons. Because, I mean, Mercano has has the beats um, in there. Maybe maybe this fits in Mercano ar armory. I'm going to have to talk with other people about this. But, it, it, I mean, it's a site. It's, sites are generally pretty good. Um, some suck, of course. But it's the only site we've seen so far. I don't know if there's any, any more in there, so... They're they're keeping the design space alive. Um, we'll see if there's a. I don't know how to rate this honestly. Like I, I if I if I mean careful, I'm gonna say it's a it's a it's, it's a three, but I don't know if it's his play at all. But it could be bad. It could maybe I'm trying to I'm trying to like I'm trying to dissect why they why they put it in the set. What is their idea behind it? And I just I don't get it. Um. Nightwatch Broadsword. Nightwatch Broadsword is a 5 power double justice 4 3 relic weapon. One of your units dies, gained one armor. Okay. Going back to Gates of Hope. Um, this is certainly interesting. It has ways of replenishing itself. I don't know. I'm still going to probably put it at one star. Tavrod is back! And Tavrod is a five power triple justice. He lost his shadow. Like Peter Pan. He lost his shadow. Tavrod Arc Financier is a five seven. He didn't lose his attack though. Well, he lost his uh his legendary status. I, I keep remembering that too. Like a lot of these cards they got like new versions lost like went down in like rarity which is weird you just it's weird to think about some of these but but some of each other units attack and health become the lower of the two okay you killed harga tarod's like screw you harga you're gonna die And two, draw a weapon from the top five cards of your deck and give it plus five attack. Discard the rest. Okay. I don't like this. I really don't. Like, I'd rather play other Tabrod every day of the week. Um, and maybe there's a universe where we play both of these because other Tabrod can fetch out this Tabrod and then they, they're milling themselves and finding weapons and minotaurs and I don't know I don't quite like this card like I'm not ready to put it a one 
but it's a soft two. Unbreakable Tradition. Unbreakable Tradition is a five power, double justice, double units, attack, and health. And you can gain uh, double time or double primal. Weird. I mean, oh, pretty solid ability, honestly. Like, it's, it's certainly got some teeth to it. It costs five, but honestly, it's... I'm still going to probably put it... I mean, maybe there's some utility with it having um, triggering surges, but I don't know. Because that's, that's a double surge trigger right there. Which is neat. But, I don't know. We'll see. This seems like a one star right now. Saber of Progress is a 6 power double justice 3-3 three, three relic weapon with summon. Play a random sigil from your deck depleted for every double um uh double time that you have. Ooh, baby! Now this. This is a card. Like <sighs> this makes me this compares me to that um the Minotaur that I forget the name of it. Um, the three five it plays when you play it play justice and a time from your deck. Um, I think this is uh, this is nicer because it's a three three relic weapon. Um, also there's a random sigil too, so that's nice. Um, the only thing I've been thinking about lately is how, how many sigils are we gonna be playing in decks now that we're really caring about multiple colors and getting crazy stupid amount of influence and in multiple colors and i don't know maybe, maybe this fits in just like a combry deck like just flat out combry like but it's really an interesting ability i think it's still one uh one star small wing tinka is a six power four four tinker Quadruple justice. With flying, summon, gain, four armor. It is a one-star draft guard. Svetya. Lightbringer. Svetya, the mean green queen. Is a six-power, five-five scion. She is the new uh, starter green scion, because Roland. Dummy old Roland. But we'll get to. Oh, roll it. You're coming. But she, uh, six mana, five, five, scion. Oh, only triple justice. I'm surprised. Who ages surge. Each unit in your deck gets plus one, plus one. Summon. The enemy player can't play units until the end of your next turn. This is goofy. Oh, man. Uh... I'm glad it has Aegis, because, um, it reminds me of the Vani War Song, the, um, Rakano card, that, uh, War Cries, every unit in your deck, but this is so much better than that, like, I mean, and she costs six, she could fit in even strategies here, um, I don't know. Um, the one mana 1-1 one, one Oni uh, that when it attacks becomes a 2-3 and the ultimate boosts the deck and gives them overwhelm. I don't know how many times you've actually resolved that ultimate, but drawing cards after that is kind of insane. Um, It's hard to really evaluate, but I'm very glad it has ages. Um, because just comparing it to the previous, uh, the eight cost version, which I'm pretty sure has been rotated from um, Expedition. Um, if if the eight mana versions rotated, then I mean, 
it, the Eggman version is much better because I keep forgetting that um, when you play her, um, your entire deck gets Aegis, which is and and a buff on top of that. Because she, she is the Mean Green Queen. Um, but I like the secondary ability. The enemy player can't play units until the end of your next turn. Um, and Expedition, where we... I'm fairly certain we don't have Svetya. Other Svetya. I think this is pretty good. I think this is a pretty solid ability. Um, but... And Throne? Probably not. So yeah. That, that I... We might have to try her at some point. See if see if we if we what we really want to be doing on six, maybe she doesn't belong anywhere. Maybe like she has no place because, like, Agro, <laughs> Agro doesn't want her. Like, Agro is already won by the time we've hit six power. Or if not, something's gone horribly wrong. But who knows? I because the other Sveti is good because she gives every unit in your deck ages, and she also buffs them as well. But I don't know what to think about her. Massive Greatsword is a 7 power double just a 7-7 seven, seven, triple 7s. Massive Greatsword can't be killed except by reaching 0 armor. Okay. No cats. No cats allowed. Cat Cats cannot touch this card. It's cool. I just, uh... It's a 7-7 seven, seven, seven relic weapon. Um... Good at removal. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. Um I don't like it too much because it costs seven. But maybe in the uh as a market option for the for the relics deck, like But um, my the saddest thing is this thing this thing dies hard to vision of austerity. Uh, cause that that makes me sad. Uh, well, I mean it makes me glad, but it is a rare, so they were thinking very highly of this. Maybe they just don't want to show up so much in limited. I don't know, but it's neat. I don't. Know. What do you think about this? I'm going to give it a 1. Because it has potential. Because, I mean, if some kind of... If any, like, the Rakana weapon stack or the um, Ixton weapon stack wants to play something like this, it's like a 1 of. Go ahead. It's, it's nice fetchable with the um, Dragon Forge. Because making it cost 6. Um, it's like a utility weapon. But other than that, I can't really think of that many uses for it. All right, move this. Probably have two more here. Roland the Merciless. Oh, we do have a Roland. This is news to me. I'm just, I'm just thinking of the, the Archibald Roland we have later on. Roland Merciless. Is a 7 power 6-6 six, six, Sion. Triple Justice. With endurance, your other just units have plus one plus one. Oh, he must be the one you get from the intro, uh, the new player pack. It's not Svetia, even though it should be Svetia because she's the Scion. Okay. Weird. Okay. Um, your other just units have plus one. We're all attacks. Play two, three, two soldiers. He's fine. Dice removal. Cost seven. Good for um. I mean, it makes green soldiers, so it pumps them up while he's in play. So, I think this is good for starting out people. Um, other than that, he's a little too expensive. My tastes. He does have endurance, though. And that, that is certainly something to consider. But, yeah. Not too key on him. Makto, Makto, man. Makto. Valorous Savior. Makto is back. And he has an 8 power double justice. He lost a shadow, just like Peter Pan. 5-5 uh, five, five, Valkyrie. 
With flying revenge, good. All revenge never ends. Prevent all damage that would reduce you below one. This card is hilarious. I love this thing, honestly. Like, I love this card so much. Um, Because you bet I'm giving this thing ages every day of the week. Like, if you if you play Mokdo and you lose, that's on you. Like, <laughs> uh, this card is going straight into horror control. Like, I don't know. It's it's just a solid card, and I'm I'm very excited that, <laughs> and he will ne his revenge will never end. So you can, and especially it's funny if you get multiple of him on out. Um, and it, it's more of an incentive to play a revenge deck because, like, if you have two Mokdos out, that's just that's just value, man. Because the the thing it does it is like this thing, like, you gotta play turn to seed. You you have that's that's the way of dealing with this guy. You have to turn him to seed or polymorph or or any kind of transform effect, like. Like I guess I guess that is the way you lose when you play this card is if he gets if he gets turned to a seed or polymorphed, but yeah that's still a card but what a card this is. See I'm gonna I'm gonna establish the full lock. I'm gonna get Mokto and um God the tin cost uh dinosaur guy. I can't remember his name. It's been so long since I played this game. I'm going to get them both in play at the same time. And that is the full lock. There is nothing they can do. Like, they have to they have to make, like, weird killer lines. Or, like, silence. That's it. Like, they... they, they those are their only outs at that point. Like, if they, if they can silence, um, like, a unit-based silence. Like, the fun police on the, the big dragon guy. But... Against most decks that aren't running silence, that is a total lock. And most decks are not running silence. And that is it for our Justice cards. I will be back again with our uh, Primal cards in the next part of this video. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video. And uh, I will see you guys later.